Uh, uh, thanks very much, and uh, I'll elaborate on that a little bit. Um, when Dave uh, called me uh, to come in here and, and speak, I, I wanted to come right away. Um, it was a great chance to, to get back, and uh, I, I told Dave right away. And, but the next topic of conversation was uh, presenting. What are you going to present on? So, of course, we got Willie, who's my boss, and we've got uh, Babs, and we got Tip, and we got Dave. So, I didn't have much of a choice in the uh, in the old department of what topic do you want. They said. How about developing young D? And I said, is that what no one else wants? And it was pretty much, yeah. And then, all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. I had to take it. So, but I, I was real pumped to come. And I think any time with this, it was for me, it was, uh, I, I keep track just like all you other coaches. I keep track of the D stuff. I love working with the D. I think they're highly, they're highly coachable guys, usually the D. They like to do things right. You know, forwards, you, we've been, uh, as parents, we've been given our forwards, uh, candy and pop and after games for scoring goals but we've been given the D what are we given the D so they usually follow the rules a little better those forwards that's why you can't trust them because for the times we're little we're saying you get a pop and a burger and some chips after the game if you get a couple goals right so that's all they think about so it's easier to kind of coach the D's so I wanted to jump right into the topic and before I start you know, I'm from Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan. I'll give you a little, my quick little background. I'm from Hudson Bay. I'm a son of a school teacher. My dad taught school for 35 years. Uh, he was one hell of a teacher. It's, um, it's uh, probably where I, I got my edge to to want to be coaching and teaching. I, I, I played junior hockey in the Western League in, in Brandon, in Saskatoon. I went on to go to the U of S. I got a degree out of the U of S. I'd, I'd taken some classes while I played junior, so I ended up getting a degree out of the U of S, went to Sweden to play, and then was six years in, uh, in um, the West Coast Hockey League as a player assistant. That's really where the whole time uh, I was playing junior and I realized I wasn't a very good player, and I don't know why I'm talking about D. I was a real knock-kneed skater. I could hardly skate. I know Mooner's here, and Strushi would be bugging me because he knows I couldn't skate, but I'm talking about developing D. And, um, I couldn't skate, I realized early I'm not going to play, but I really, you know, I got my education degree, but the whole time I really wanted to coach. I really wanted to coach. And I think coaching really, guys, is about developing players. And today we're going to talk about developing D, but it's developing players. I think as, as coaches, I, I went on from, from Fresno, I went to GM and coach in Vegas for six years, to Austin, Texas for two with Dallas, and then with Dallas Stars for two, and then to uh, uh, Vancouver after I got fired in Dallas. And, I, I think with coaching, uh, there's lots of good advice I, I got from coaching, but one of the things is um, developing players and, and even over winning. You know, at, at every level we're developing, even we're developing Bo Horvat in the, in the NHL, um, you're always developing players. And I think as coaches, if we've got that in mind, if our, our, our beliefs are true that we've got the best interest of getting our players better, then that, that your teams will get better, you will eventually win, and that's how you as the coaching rank can, can see yourself up with Tip and, and Babs and, and Todd and Willie and, and coaching at higher levels is to have those, those players as your focus at, at getting them better. And I, I got lots of good advice from coaches over the years, and one of the coaches, uh, and I'm just going to tell you the little warnings with coaching too, I got good advice about, you know, get a home base because in coaching, get a, get a place maybe at the lake or whatever. I see all oh, Kinger's got a place at the lake, Babs got a place at the lake. I didn't really do that. I kind of didn't take that advice. So I got a place in, in Dallas still. I've got a place in, in Las Vegas still. And I've got, I didn't take their advice, so I got all these, these places. So the one thing I'll pass on to you guys is if you don't want to become a landlord and you want to stay in coaching, get a place at the lake. It seems like it's a little bit more secure. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so now we're into developing defensemen, and um, it's a topic, I, quite frankly, I had to do some work on, so I took my own piece of it. But I'll ask you the question, where would you start? If, if you, that was your topic, where would you start? Right? So if you think of that in your own mind, like, where, where am I going to start? Now, I, I, I had that same question myself. So for me, I thought, okay, I'm not great on the skill development side. I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that, but it's certainly not something I'm great at. But I thought, where can I start if I want to build a really good defense? And I'm probably going to start in a place where, um, I don't know if a lot of, a lot of you think of this way, but I, it's in the clip here. It's the, the offensive blue line. 
So I just started thinking, I, like my dad was a calculus teacher, so for me, I'm a visual learner. I got to see video. Um, you know, I don't, these coaches that can just go on the ice and say, hey, like Torts would always go, hey, hash mark, hash mark, crisscross at the line, scissor play, shoot, regroup, come back, two on one. And I'm like, I'm, the co I'm one of the coaches, and I'm like, what the hell kind of drill is that? Like, I... <laughs> And, and the Sedins would line up and boom, they're ready to go. And boom, they do the drill and everybody else. And I'm like, oh my God. So I, I need to see things, right? So I need to see things in order. That's just kind of how I think. So I needed a place to start. So offensive blue line is where I started. <coughs> and uh, your whole game, in my opinion, a little bit can build from there. And I, I, I put this up here. So start at the offensive blue line at the top, defending the rush. D zone defending, and I see I missed the E there. Breakouts, neutral zone transitions, O zone play, and those are all connected both ways. But I had to have a place to start, and I, I wanted it even for coaching a place to start. Um, so I started at the offensive blue, and there it is. And I'll get into some things that I talk about on the offensive blue line here. And for D, we're going to talk gap and all these things as we go, but the offensive blue line is where you, I think there's only two places you get gap. So we're going to talk defending a little bit from the offensive blue line. We're going to talk offense from the offensive blue line. We're going to talk defense. So we're standing on the blue. There's two places you get gap, in my opinion. The offensive blue line, by holding it, not coming off it. So when the attack's coming at you, trust in your feet getting inside the dots, all those things, starting from the blue, and then joining the play. Joining the play. Right? Those are the two places the D gets gap. So we're going to start here at the, at the offensive blue line for our D. And one thing we like to talk about in, in Vancouver, is a little bit of holding the blue and a little bit of a stagger. So you can see Dan Hamus there, he's holding the blue line. His partner is pushed out a little bit because, because there's a threat of a little bit, uh, who is it, 16 there from Edmonton. But Dan's holding in. Both D don't have to get out here. Right? Read, what, read what's in front of you. Don't get off the blue too quick. All right? Hold it in. So this is the place we start at the offensive blue. Here's Dan, holds it in. Vancouver's calling offside. Boom, it's in there net. Alex Edler on the point, same thing here. There's that stagger. Okay. Alex holds it in. He's not getting off too fast. Creates a goal. Okay. Second part. So not getting off that blue too quick. Holding that blue line. Trust in your feet a little bit. You're not going to get burnt. Stagger your D. Okay, if they're pushing out one guy, only one D has to leave. One D has to get off that line and respect that speed a little bit. But the other D, play what's in front of you and hold that blue. That's where you're going to get your gap from. Second part, and this is a question we always get a long time and it, it, all the time. And with coaches, um, it seems to me a little bit like pinching. When do we pinch? Some coaches pinch all the time, strong side, weak side, all the time we pinch. But the D have to pinch. To create offense, it's so tough these days and the ozone's big but you need the D to keep plays alive for you so watch here uh, Tanev keeps it alive we get a goal once again here I'm going to show you so that's pinching here we've got a little corner work going and if you look at the circle I'm um, just going to talk to you guys about this is that's a strong side, right? The other one's a weak side. It gets rimmed around. Tanev keeps it in. We score. This is a strong side. We don't really like to pinch strong side. But what, the way the game's going, and, and you see this with lots of teams, is we, we call this sitting. All right? So right here, our D is sitting. Now it's kind of dead in this corner. So our D is sitting on that guy. So instead of the old days, you know, when the D would come racing in and they'd chip it out and these two guys go off to the races, two versus one, and everybody's cursing out your D, right? We want him to be a little tighter there in the beginning, especially if things get, get deadened up in here. Now, we, we want him to be very careful when he runs in there, just look and, get, and gets feathers, right? 
gets nothing, and they come out the other way. But if he can get there early on anything dead in these strong corners, and we call it sitting, it just helps the forwards keep the play alive. Right? Nothing worse than the forwards. You're, you're digging in there, and then all of a sudden the D are out at the red line, and you throw one back or one rolls there, and you go, where the hell is the D? Right? So we want our D up and holding the blue, and we talk about pinching versus sitting on the strong side, and we talk about that a lot. Is that only when you have possession of the puck? Pardon me? Is that only when you're sitting, only when you have possession? Yeah, it, now that's up to you as a coach. I, you know, I've coached against coaches and, and Tip and, and Willie that they're, they're hard pinching on both sides with a third guy high, right? Yeah. And if that's your style, hey, that, that's the way you want to play, that, that's fine. We, everyone wants to have a third guy high. It enables your D to move, right? But if you're always, if, you, if you're getting feathers when you're pinching, right, you're getting nothing. Then you're forcing your forward to defend. And remember the rule, right? You can never trust the forward. They were getting pop and candy all their lives. They, they're they're going to cheat, right? They're going to cheat. Oh, he's keeping it in that D. If I get this goal, I get some pop and candy, right? He's not thinking I'm covering all the time, right? So you've got to understand the mentality of your player. But if that's the way you're playing, then you play it. Um, I'm just showing different options. So third man high, you can, you can pinch, you can sit, and there's other offense you can work off that. And, I'll, and I'll, sh I'll show you that a little bit too. So we like to pinch on anything weak side, okay? Anything that gets rimmed around, third guy gets high, he knows his job, we pinch down, we keep the play alive. On the strong side, we'll hold pucks, we'll hold the blue like mad, like I showed you in the first clips, but we'll also, all right, we'll also sit on the wall if it gets deadened up. We won't go in there and race for a 50-50 puck. Now, if you can, the rule of thumb is, if you can keep it in on the strong side, keep it in. If you got it, but if you go there and you think you can keep it in and you don't, well then, whose fault is it? Because you can't trust the forward. So just watching this shift, just show you how active your D can be to help keep offense alive. So we got a third guy high and now it enables those D to play. We've got possession. And you see how he's reading that with a third guy high here? Forward ends up keeping it in. Burr should have shot that. Holding the blue. Want to point out one thing, we'll get into the offensively. Where's where's BX standing? Why? Yeah, making the zone as big as it can be. Right? Kinger talked about that. But ready to jump in and pinch. And I'll and I'll go I'll, this this shift lasts another 30 seconds, right, in this zone. But I'm just giving you an idea of how those D are helping these forwards keep the game alive. Okay, so now we've got sitting and we've got pinching and we've got holding this blue. Now sometimes you just have to come off it, but this is where you get your gap. This is uh, Tip's team and uh, they, they've got great gap. Oliver Ekman Larson here is his clip. This is when I coached Dallas. This is why they beat us all the time. Um, first step when you have to leave the blue line that they have possession, the first step that they make is inside, as you can see here with that arrow. He gets, his, he gets his, we call it, sin, get the dots, all right? This other D, stepping right across, look at that gap. As a forward, you hate that. You hate it. Great gap. This is Yogg's, makes Yogg's turn around. And that's what offensive guys do. They hate that stuff. Right here, this clip here, we, you're going to see a few of our defensemen. And Liddy, Doug Lidster is a coach with us. He did a, did a remarkable job. He, he, he calls this gully gap, okay? But it's not really gully gap. Um, Chicago does this all the time. If you watch the playoffs, Shalmerson, Keith, right? They'll skate forward at guys. And we, we tell our D to do the same thing. It, it gets you a better gap. So they'll come off that line. You saw Ekman Larson do it. If they recognize these situations, they'll skate forward off players. And now you can see the crates, the turnover. Watch this D D against Detroit. You watch Tanev here, number eight. There he goes. 
real annoying to play against. We call it gap. So we have that an offside D when he recognizes, he'll come over, skate, get his gap going forward, make it hard, get, create some turnovers. And you see here, we turn this over and we're right back on the attack. Once again, good gap, turnover, this is what it leads. D's joining up, Stan's quick chests them. I give Stan some kudos later, so. You watch it again. Good gap. Creates a turnover, and I'll let you guys just watch this play. It's Verbata. Nice little play. Okay, defending the rush. So now we've got, we've got off the blue, we've got good gap, we're creating these turnovers, life's perfect. Okay, um, but now we, we lose a forward. So I, I got this diagram, well I read you up, but I got a diagram like this from Les Jackson in Dallas and he, uh, an old coach had given it to him and he basically said, in all defense, you know, guys call it inside out from the dots out, but the rink inside the rink. If you protect the rink inside the rink, you defend from the middle out, all right, it's a, it's a, good, st it's a good starter for, for our D. So we talked about our gap, we talked about getting off inside the dots and, and, and do an ass in first, get the dots and then make your reads. So now we've got things coming. Now we've lost some forwards that are trying to uh, hold pucks in or they're cheating a little bit and we, we're defending the rush. All right. Two different styles here, I'll just kind of throw them. They're in the NHL, there's two different styles that they're going on. Ours is different from, uh, from Calgary. Calgary beat us out, maybe they're right. Maybe we're dumb, they're smart. But you watch Calgary here, there's a turnover, they lose three forwards. The D get the dots back, but they really manage the middle. So they'll invite the rush. So reading the rush, they, they see it's odd man, you see the three guys here. They see it's odd man, they're just going to manage the middle, right? Manage the middle, wait for tracking help. They're getting inside the dots. Tomes, you played for me in Vegas. This is how we kind of played. Tomes managed the dots lots, boys. And they manage the middle, they make their goalies make a save. See it again here? This is us against them. And you can see even with numbers, they invite the rush a little bit. Okay, so managing the middle of the ice. So that, that's one way you can play. Get in the middle, manage the middle, wait for tracking help. Now that all comes into system play, how far you're going to track and all that. But that, to me, that's a good starter for D. Because if you can get them to do that, you can protect the middle. <coughs> but I think eventually you have to ask them to be more aggressive. And this is your progressions of teaching. You have to ask them to be more aggressive. We ask our guys to be more aggressive. So if you watch our guys, we'll, we call this the slide. So we'll manage the dots and we'll slide. We'll bring both the over and slide. I'll show you what I mean here. Hopefully I illustrated it good enough. So now we're giving up an odd man rush. There's those forwards that like all the candy. And we'll slide our 2D over here. And so I just want to ask you guys the question. What is this right now? One on one, two on two, three on three. What is it? Four on two. Or is it a two on two? So that's a, that's a little bit of our mindset. Until this guy gets up with the play, it's a two on two. So we'll slide. And you'll see the secondary, we call this the, the, the secondary kill zone here, right here where this box is. And we'll slide and try to take them into that kill zone. Okay. And then we'll come back through the middle to try to make even numbers with our forwards, but our deal slide and try to make them make plays. Now, Babs isn't here, so it's not Dion Phaneuf. We're not trying to kill that guy here because we recognize there's some danger coming from behind. But we feel that's a two-on-two two to start. And so we'll slide our D over and play that two-on-two and, two and try to confront them in this kill zone here. Okay? So if you start by managing the middle 
and you've got good D, maybe you start to push the envelope a little bit. You've got good skating D, maybe you want to go this way. Hey, I, I can just say this. Uh, in the NHL, uh, I've coached. I coached the Manage the Dots ways. In the American Hockey League, I, I coached uh, Manage the Dots like Calgary does. We went to the Calder Cup final. In the East Coast League, I, I did Manage the Dots. But when Dougie and Willie and, uh, and it was even with Torch started to play this way, I was skeptical, but I started to, I started to like it. So I'm just saying that. It's up to you as a coach. I'm just kind of throwing out the options for you. I'm not saying what's right or wrong. But it's a good way to maybe teach your D if you got high functioning D. Here we go again. I'm just going to ask the question. Is that a three on two or a two on two? So we're going to be aggressive. So we'll call this, we've got good gap here. We'll be aggressive with this. We'll give a little false information. We're not overplaying this guy, but we want to get him into that first zone one kill right by the blue. We don't want him to get our blue here. It's a pretty fast player. But you see how we're not overplaying that? We're giving him a little false information there. We'll take you, we'll take you. But if he moves it inside, we're still going to try to recover our other D sliding over. And I'll just give you this last one for some critical thinking for you as a coach to make you think this is probably the purest three on two. Right? It's probably the purest three on two. Slide, slide. They didn't make the play. Now probably you look dumb when they do. Got to give up a breakaway. But whatever you're teaching, teach it. But I'm just giving you some other ideas. But you're always teaching your back checker to come to this off the end, certainly. So that's a great thing coming right down the middle to try to make even numbers. Now there's different ways you can put your back checker. You can have them track the puck all the way to the far blue. You can have them trade into the red. You know, my history is if you ask the, the forward to, to track the puck to the red line, that means three feet before the red line, right, for him. So if you make him go to the blue, you think, well, that's three feet before the blue, he'll stop going. So at least you get him to go a little further. But um, Willie, we do it, we come down the middle, we try to make even numbers right away. If not, we're coming right through the middle and we're waiting for the D's direction. But our team knows that our D will slide on those things so they come hard through the middle and that backside guy, they leave alone. And if they make the play there and they roof one on you, then we tell them, well, we'll line up. We'll line up and let them drop the puck. But make the play. But we gotta get them in that zone one, that would be the key. You can't, let the, you can't try to do this at the top of the circle. Right? You got to get them at that blue, that zone one blue or a meter over the blue. You know, when you talk about coaching systems, and I, I'm just getting into trying to develop young D and give you guys ideas of how, hey, if your D are good at managing the middle and you got some real smart players, hey, I can tell you as a forward, who's a forward in here? Okay, not many. But I can tell you as a forward, I hated when D came over and got me at the blue. I'd rather them let me carry it in. Right, carry it in, look to make a play. Because if you ask offensive, good offensive players, they like to hold the puck and they think they can make plays. Right? They don't want to be forced all over the place. If the Sedins hate it, they hate it. They hate it in practice when our D do that to them. They get mad. Right? They want to make plays. Good reads here. Now managing the middle. So now he makes a read. Uh, and, and this is just stuff hockey sensory D. Kevin Bieksa doesn't go, but he's got a great stick. Okay, and he's managing, he, he's, he's looking at that situation, he does a hell of a job. How to play a pull-up. So now, this is Calgary, just rule of thumb that we use. If the D is a stick length and he's playing the guy and he pulls up, the D is going to play him. All right, if, if the D is engaged with him and he's a stick length away and he's playing him, the D is going to play him, the forward's got to go through that. But that's something that you guys are going to have to talk about, but it's something we tell our young D if you're on a guy, you're going to stay on him just like the Calgary. I think that's Bodie there. And now he's ready to join the rush. Um, so we've come off the blue. I like things in order. So we come off the blue. We've, def we, we've looked at defending the rush. The only thing I didn't put in defending the rush was two versus ones. And um, there's lots of debate. I know there's lots of D in here, kid. 
you're in, in here, Richie. Uh, Pilon's in here. Uh, I think Dave Manson was here yesterday. Um, the only thing we really tell our D if, 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 on a two verse one is, by the top of the circles, don't let the puck go back the, uh, to the other guy. So whatever you're doing, don't let it go back because by the top of the circles, your goalie moves, he's focused on the shot, and now if you're Swiss cheese and it goes back over, now he's got to make a highlight reel save to do it. We, whatever, however you do it, don't let it go back from the top of the circles. Now, if you want to force the guy early, make him make a play and then chase him almost like a breakaway, you want to do the Lidstrom, you want to stack your feet and you want to go down, however you do it, do it. Don't let it go back from the top of the circles. If you want to slide, slide. Okay, but that's about the only thing that I, I didn't put in there. And I think that's coach's preference with, with, with your defenseman, how you want to play those things. I don't think there's a wrong and right way. I think it's your preference with your players. But as long as you're teaching them what you want them to do and you're consistent, all right? Lots of things that we do in coaching, we don't say, you have to do this. We just say, don't let it come across. I don't care how you do it, don't let it come across. So find a way. Right? And in practice, two-on-ones, everyone, we all do two-on-ones in practice. That's when you tell your D to figure it out. That's when you have them chase guys, see what they can do, see how far they can push guys, see if sliding works for them. That's, that's when you do that kind of stuff. I didn't put those clips in here, but I just wanted to, to mention it. Okay. So uh, now we're in our zone. So this is... Uh, They've dumped it in, they've chipped it in, they're, they're in our zone. The first thing we talk about is we want to deaden these things up. So this is what we teach your D. Good stick on body, but if you and another guy are going in there, stick on the puck, on the body, get it dead. Don't let them have speed in your zone. Get it dead so that we can bring in our numbers and have help. And this is our one-on-one -on -one battles that Dave was, has mentioned three or four times here. Chipping the puck in, having your D battle and trying to get it dead. Here's Alex Goligoski trying to get him to the wall. So there comes our forward to help. Goose isn't a very big guy. He's having trouble, so we bring in Fistrix a little heavier. Does the ride him, cowboy. And we're out. But we want to deaden those battles so we can break out. Here's Chris Tanov in with a, real, with a pretty slick player. Get him to the wall. Good stick on the puck. Right? Win the one-on-one -on -one battle. And you can see our D in front of the net waiting to, to exit, and we'll talk about that as, as we move forward. So battles are important. Getting guys to the wall, very important. Watch uh, Jason Garrison playing in the Stanley Cup final. Um, just defending the rink inside the rink, so we're defending from the inside the dots here. He's got a good stick on puck. This D in front, or the D in front, Edler, got a good stick on puck. So Defending from the middle, sticks on the ice, stick on the puck is huge. We're all, we're all into that all the time. You can't have your stick in the air. You can't be Swiss cheese, right? Stick on puck, stick on the ice, defend from the middle out, and know when to go out. And we'll get into that here. Positioning is important. Positioning as a defenseman is, is, is so important. So you got your battles for a young D as one-on-ones, getting things to the wall, good stick on puck. Stick is your first line of defense. Second line of defense is your body, all right? Third line of defense is probably taking a penalty. So for a D, you got to win your battles, and now you got to have your positioning. So from inside the dots, you want to defend, but good stick on the ice. So you watch the little D zone here. Even our forwards got their stick on the ice. But here comes Mark Fistrick. He makes his read. He's going to stick on, stick on the puck and then body. Takes the guy out. We join the rush. Here again, things are deadened up. Watch the net front D here. So positioning, now we've got this in the corner. Lots of guys, we always play our D, as we do in the penalty kill, off the strong post. So he's closer to the battle. And we want him to see all the strong posts so anything that leaks out here doesn't come to the front of the net. But we want him on the strong post here. Okay, so positioning is key. We like that. Now there's a breakdown. He's holding the net front. All right? He's holding the net front. He's taking away low ice. Now here's a little bit of our uh, coaching, and it's even left over from, from Torts. Is we don't care how you, just don't let it come in front. All right? So a little different technique from Hammer. Some guys don't like D to leave the front, leave their feet. 
So there are the ceiling posts. You watch it come around this other side. We see all the front of the net, our positioning. Okay. Now we want to defend from the inside out. Sticks on puck. And I'm just going to rewind that because it's subtleties, but this is, uh, this is gear. Stick on the ice. Stick on the ice. Right? They have to throw a bad pass. They have to flip it over a stick. We break out. Okay. Puck switches sides. So I know with Babs, uh, get it in, switch sides, low to high, work it. Right? Because when you switch sides, people got to move. That's offensive. Defensive tactics. We tell our D, do not get stuck in the blue paint. All right? One D's in the corner, it switches sides. Do not get stuck in the blue paint. You ever have those young D just st standing in the blue paint, just kind of... You got to be able to flex out. You got to see what's around you and behind you. Have a good stick on the ice. So positioning is important. This is that strong side post positioning. Be able to flex out and get D and get those guys. So positioning is important. We love the strong side post. <coughs> You watch it here with our team in Dallas. Nick Grossman in front. Good stick on puck, good positioning. You'll see it here. Now, we don't think guys can score from behind the net. We want to pressure as much as we can. But for our D, it's good, I think, for good for young D and developing young D that they recognize when they're leaving the front and when they're not. When they're leaving like when they're leaving the high scoring areas like the house I always tell my son he plays offense now I say to him you know buddy when we go to fishing lake by foam lake and we spend three weeks there fishing I said um, we got our favorite spots right yeah we, we know where the fish are right yeah yeah I say well do we go fish in the middle of the lake no I said why we won't catch any fish exactly so I said in hockey this is where the fish are right so when you're playing offense, you want to go where the fish are. When you're playing defense, you don't leave where the fish are unless you're going home, right? So we don't want to leave here unless we know we've got this checked off. So here's uh, Alex Goligoski. It's good position. There they think he's coming. He takes it away. You'll see it again here. We lose some checks. So I'll rewind that for you with our net D. We lose some checks, but it's good positioning off that strong post. We're not leaving the front. But what we'd prefer is pressure, right? We'd prefer pressure. So then we got to know when to go, all right? So a couple things. Always beat your check off the wall, D, and, get, and win the race back to the dot. So win your race back to the house. So if you check them, deaden them. If you can't, they cycle. Win the race back to the dot. That allows your other D in front to move. There's Goligoski. Now he's good to go. So the rule of thumb there is if you're going, we want you to go. We encourage that. We want you to go, but that puck doesn't come in front. Right? So your read's got to be right. Your partner's got to win the race back to the front of the net. That's how D work in tandem. And let's be good to go. Now we, let's go win that battle. Positioning, battles, right? They all work hand in hand. Stick and puck. See it again here. We want him to win the battle off the wall, win the race to the dot. There's our net front D. He's good to go. We got lots of pressure. Now we're coming in to support it. We got two 175 pound defensemen there, so we're trying to get some guys to the wall. Okay, so positioning's important. We like the strong, I like the strong post, and that's your preference. So we've got our battles, we've got our positioning, we've got stick on puck. Uh, defending from inside out for young D. And then there's teams, there's, there's two kind of strategies in this defending zone. Teams that seal out and teams that front. Okay, so puck, you lose some battles, it gets out to the point. Your D now are in front. So there's a seal out. You'll watch Kevin Bieksa here. I think that's going to get out of the game. I think, they're going to, I think that's going to get out of the game. Okay, with seal outs, what we teach our guys, and if it's in the game, let's teach it because we're all teaching D and we want to make a living, is with the D there, anything that goes up or changes sides, any, any of the pressure, any of the forwards come from the corner, 
we want to, and I'll rewind it, we want to meet that battle. We don't want to wait for it to come to us. So we'd rather engage in that physical battle here than stand here or stand in the middle of the net, let that guy come and then get engaged with him. Let's go meet him somewhere halfway. Let's make ourselves big with our stick like Kevin Bieksa does here. Make him start battling here. Has to go all the way to the net. So we go meet that battle. Go find it, meet it, and keep him away from your net. Okay. Team is playing the Stanley Cup playoffs right now. They like to keep 2D around their net, and they don't seal you out. They've won a couple cups lately, too, I heard. So puck goes out to the point. Watch here, out to the point. No seal outs. They just let guys go to the net. Yeah, they're fronting. They're not extending themselves out past this hash mark. They're staying, they're getting in the shot lanes, they're looking to block. Any weak wristers that come through here, they'll take and try to jump north. Okay, they'll take in their pants and try to jump north. Any loose pucks, they're free, they'll jump it quick so they get good pressure on you in the zone. Okay, and they'll block. They're blocking. Their forwards are trying to block, and now their D are looking to block, and their D don't extend themselves too far. All right? It's like their penalty kill. Tip talked about their penalty kill and their five on three, how they didn't venture, or Detroit didn't venture, Chicago didn't venture far. This is, it, it's similar to their five on five game. Okay, so they don't venture far. What Chicago's really good at is if they block these, they'll go, take off on you. If, if they go into the corner, they jump you really quick. And if it lingers around there, their sticks are free and they clear them. Right? So neither are wrong. Detroit seals out like crazy. It's almost interference. You, you saw Tampa was complaining about that in the playoffs, right? They're complaining because they couldn't go anywhere. And is, is this a, would this be a tactic that Chicago uses based on personnel? Great question. I, I, I had, we, uh, Willie and I were discussing this at, at the round table in Vancouver. And uh, if I'm L.A., I got Clydesdales back there, I'm sealing out all day long. You can't go anywhere with L.A. Green and Regeer and Muzzin. And, but if I've got little freewheelers, the guys that can skate, Seabrook's probably their biggest guy. I've got Oduya, Shalmerson can skate, that whole group. I'm probably, you might want to play this way. So that's the craft of coaching. What do you have? Right? What kind of team do I have? Do I got small puck moving D? Do I got great big strong guys? What do I got? What do I have? I got a hybrid? Do we seal out sometimes? If we seal out, we, if we can, we seal out. If not, we let them go in front. Right? These are all things you got to talk with your D about. Right? And none are wrong, but, you know, you have to give them something. Okay? What we usually do in Vancouver is if we can seal out, we'll take the seal. If we can't, then we'll front. We'll front. And if we front, we want to be under the stick. So we, want, we don't want to be tied up like this. We want to seal if we can. If not, if they establish position, you get big guys, they establish position, let them establish it. You can front them now, but keep your stick free. And if you're tying up his stick for deflection, make sure you're underneath. You're always underneath. You're not over top. Because if you're over top, you don't have a good chance of getting it after, if it's laying around. And most of the goals are being scored with rebounds right now. So you have to, have the, you have to be able to clear those pucks and, and be the first guy on them. That's why we want guys underneath. Okay, when all else fails, and they get, we got to block shots. Here's a couple blocks here. We're in the penalty kill here. D, unfortunately, part of the job hazard. Chris Tanev has got, oh my God, he, he is the toughest player that I've coached. Chris Tanev. He is fearless. And you watch our guys here. Our forward's got a block. This is penalty kill, but our D in front thinks he takes it. Not a great spot, but it's part of, it's part of it. Um, guys used to always ask me uh, when I worked with Torts, because Torts' teams are notorious for, for uh, blocking shots. They go, how does Torts get guys to block shots? What does he do? Does he shoot at practice? What does he do? <laughs> I said, no, he just tells them you're going to block shots. If you're playing for me, you're going to block shots. So what is, how does he teach it? I go, he doesn't teach it. He just says, I don't care how you do it, block the shot. 
I don't care if you go down on one leg. Don't flamingo. Go, I don't care if you go down, you stay up, block the shot. Block it. You're going to have to block it. So that's it. First couple meetings of the year, you don't block when you're on video, and then the rest of the time you block shots. So it's just the way, it, the way he goes. Okay. We're going to go now. So we're on that offensive blue. We left it. We had good gap. We defended the rush. We went in our zone and we defended. But now we're going back to that offensive blue line. And now we've done a good job, right? Now we're, now we're, now we're creating offense, neutral zone transition. How do our D transition the puck? And we want our D to play quick. And I always used to say, uh, in, instead of slow. So we want to move it up right up. So D right up if we can in the neutral zone. If we cause a turnover, move it up quick. Give it, get in the forward's hands. Let them go. All right. If, if the forwards are still getting out of the zone, then we got to go D to D, buy a little bit of time, but let's move it up or let's go. Um, we used to always say too, I used to say, if, we, if, we're going, if all night we are going D to D to D, we're going to be out of the playoffs. Right? D to D to D and out of the playoffs. The D handle it too much. Right? So we want to be quick. When I had Yarmir Yager in Dallas, I told him that same speech. I said, D, we want to play quick. It's D right up or D to D and right up, and let's get moving with it. And I left the locker room, and Yogs was in there, and all I could hear was him singing a song. He was in one of his happy moods, and he was singing, D, it's D to D to me. D to D to me. D to D to me. So that's what he was telling our guys all the time. So he always wanted the puck. He, al he always wanted it. Um, yeah, it, it was great coaching him. He was great for us. Um, I, I've told this, this story before, but he, he was on our bench, and uh, he got his 1,000th assist and, uh, in a game in Dallas. So they're flashing the 1,000 up on the screen, and Eric Nystrom, who's a chip off the old bo uh, block of Bobby, he's one of, one of the best, my favorite guys I've coached, he used to call Yarm, he, he, he nicknamed Yogs, he nicknamed him Jimmy. So he say so he was playing with Yogs on the line and he looks over at Yogs and he sees us. He doesn't know quite Nystrom doesn't quite know what's going on. He's like a thousand. He goes, Jimmy, did you just get your thousandth point? And Yogs looks at him disgusted, like he's like, thousand point? It's like it's a thousand assists. He goes, I had a thousand points ten years ago in this league. <laughs> so okay, so neutral zone transitions. Here's one, Chris Tana, boom, quick up, find a guy. We're in the net. Dumps out, you left the blue, you did a great job. Find the transition, quick up. Boom, it's in the net. Good gap, good sticks. Find the transition, right away, in the net. Quick transition, indirect off the wall. D join, quick chest. Okay, so those are the individual ones. We want our D to play quick. Now there's a lot, so when you guys work with your D, you gotta work in tandems, a lot of the D to D stuff. So D to D, direct up the middle, good goal, D to D, Indirect, so we work on these. So I, I put these all here um, so you guys can just see, like we work on this D to D, indirect off the wall. D to D, find the middle. So these are all things you can work on with your, with your, in your transitions. D to D, find the seam. And I put some drills in there just so that we, we do this stuff, D to D, find the seam. So partner work, quick work, and, the, and those drills are in that booklet you have. But it's important as you D to work in, in, in tandems here. Here's another D to D. This is D to D, back to D. And I think this is what takes you out of the playoff slots, but at times you need to do it. Right? So we don't do it as much. The game's kind of changed that way. There's not a lot of D to D and back to D. All right? So it's D to D, quick ups. What we do, what we are trying to do, and, and, and hopefully this is new, maybe you guys are way ahead of it, but for, for us it's new. What we are trying to do is, every, lots of teams play this one, two, two, and 
for our D, we want, we want our, we're trying to create offense, offense with your D all the time, and developing young D is not have them sit still, okay? So we're trying to tag team these, th this F1, and, and it, I'll just run you some clips, but we talk about this and we show it. So if you watch our D here, and now they're in the rush playing. Watch it again, so it's a quick D to D. Catch that lazy forward, come back in the rush, that's a D. D to D, D to center, you ever hit the center in the middle? Then jump by the F1. The forwards skate the same pattern. Skate down, they turn, they want to go the other D, you hit the middle, jump past them. Work the F1 here, up, D. Jump past. So there's ways you can create offense with your young D in the middle. So have them work in unison. Here's D to D. Now, I put this last clip in. When do we hold it as a D? When do you hold it in the neutral zone? You create a turnover, when do you hold it? Yeah. I think we, we have to teach that with our young guys. Because I see it at the NHL level. And recognize where your forwards are at. If your forwards are bag tired and they're trying to get off, now it's time to hold it. Now it's not time to play quick. Because we just don't want to shoot it back in, let them start with a breakout. Now we're defending. Right? We want to hold that puck. And these are good times to hold it. So you see us, we do a good job. And we talk about this in the NHL. And it's good to talk about these, these things with your young D. So now we're holding it. And we're starting over. But it's better than giving them the puck and having them start on a controlled breakout. Right? So recognizing when, hey, know where you are in the game. Things to tell your young D. It's time to hold it. So that's a neutral zone transitions. I'm going to work into breakouts here. I'm going to try to go quick. I don't know how long. I'm probably going too, too long here. So, um, but I, I do want to make a point on breakouts. I, th I think breakouts, I'm going to make an analogy. It's like smoking, right? It's like smoking. Smoking, smoking gives you cancer, right? We all, we all know that. So in the way not to have cancers it, or to, to, to ward off cancer or keep the chances of cancer down is, is to not smoke right? So it's preventative. Analytics is getting into, there's a lot of analytics now. We've got our analytics guys in Vancouver and this thing is becoming really important because this is the preventive measure of playing in your own end all night, right? We as coaches, I did as a young guy, I'm going D-zone coverage, D-zone coverage, D-zone coverage, D-zone coverage, D-zone coverage, right? D-zone coverage is the cancer, I, I want to work, we work on this all the time. We want to prevent it. We don't want to be in our own zone. We'll do it when we have to. We'll take chemotherapy when we have to. But we don't want to be in there. We want to break out. We want to break out. The cleaner we break out, we attack, we, we're on the rush, we're through the neutral zone, we're playing in their end. They dump it in, we break out clean, we're back the other way. We don't have to play in our D zone. Zone time is a big analytics now, right? Zone time, these are all linked to here. This is the preventative measure. We do a lot of this. Willie and Perry Pern brought this to my attention and they do a lot of this. So all these things, I'm going to go through them quickly. What I did is I put this video, you guys, on YouTube. So if you want to look at, uh, uh, and I'll give you, it's SHA, SHA conference developing young D men it's on YouTube you just type that in this will come up and you can have it and watch it forever if there's little things you like to pick up because um, if I when I come to these things I write some real good stuff down and then I forget like I, I, I need the visual of it so if, if, if there's if there's stuff there that you want I just put it up there so everybody has it quick ups I'm just gonna quick ups with the D just watch the D break out Quick up, up the middle. These are things you should be working with your D every day. Wheel. Wheel. 
Wheel the nut to the, to the center. Rimming is a breakout. I don't think it should be your primary. Rim and a bump back to your D, D joint. This is one with Dougie has. We do these all the time. Dougie says, sometimes, boys, it's okay to punt. <laughs> and it's a skill to be able to flip the puck. We're out, but it's okay to punt every once in a while. These are partners working in reverse, and what happens is the, the second guy coming in, the second defenseman or the second player calls net or wall here. In this case, he calls wall. Wall means it goes up the wall two feet. Net means it goes behind the net two feet. And it's death by a thousand cuts. And there's our weak side D joining. So that guy, that's the guy who made the, that's the, guy who made the first aught. Here's a net aught as the D work in partners. Here's another net ought. He absorbs, leaves it, keeps it going. And who's coming? The D. We're getting into that. Breakouts. D to D to center. We've all done those. D, keep it going. Net D, join. Tip, I know you do a lot of that. If Tip's still here, talk to Verby. I picked his brain as much as I could about how you coached. So these are all partner breakouts. Now, here's where, don't neglect this, D goalie breakouts. Defense and goalie breakouts. You have to work these guys together. They're part of it. They're linked. This is how you connect your D to your goalie, to your forwards, to your breakouts. So here we, we, we got a leave it called. So whatever your, your commands are to your D, you have to work it with your young D on breakouts. Breakouts important. One thing I hate, gentlemen, I, I coach my son sometimes, but I sit in the stands, and boy, that drives me crazy. And I hear the parents, and I hear, get it out, shoot it out, shoot it off the glass, get rid of it. <coughs> For a 10-year-old D, well, that's what we're going to yell at him when he's in the NHL. Have him make plays. Have him pass it up the middle. Have him make plays. It's Adam Hockey. These D aren't going to get any better if you yell them, shoot it out. Make them make plays. We're going to ask them to pass it up the middle pretty soon. They should be doing it young. Make them make plays. Two things that, that with minor hockey I think is developing young D. As simple as grassroots as it can be is one, D have to skate and join the play, and that's coming, and D have to make plays. Break, break out, make plays, encourage them to play. Not just defend. Encourage them to play. Drew Doughty's, those guys are winning. Keith's, they win cups because they play. They play. Get, get our D to play. Get them to join the rush, and that, that's coming. Get them to make plays. Get them to break out. Don't limit our young guys. So goalie's got to be part of your breakout. D to D. And I'm just going to show you this one again. We like to play toe caps up. So when we, we want our D to be facing up ice when they play these. So you see our D here. Now the goalie plays it. We get rid of that first four checker. Now we make a play up the ice and we get playing. D gets it. Quick to the middle. Who's coming here? D coming. But this is, our, this is, this is how you play in another team's zone is by being efficient with these things. You just have to watch this play. It's a great D play, but you just got to watch it. Too bad Babs wasn't here. Little D up the middle. You see that little play right to the middle guy. There's our YD coming. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let these play. Hitting the net side D, he's always got to be jumping, hitting the net side D. I'm going to give you coaches one little tidbit that we like. We, everybody slashes, we want our D here. Ever notice he runs out of real estate? We want our slash guy to go back. We always want our D to attack the middle with the puck. So it's just a, a little thing we want to do. So if you watch it, here comes the hit our net D. We want our forward to slash back. 
and then we want to make plays. Always that net front D, this is like group breakouts. Here we go again. D always have to be part of the breakout. We want them to attack the middle. Slow teams can be quick if you break out good. Here's our net. Now D joining. I'll just let these play. There's our boy. We want them to skate. Encourage our boys. Don't be far behind the play. The only way you can get gap is moving up with the play or the offensive blue. They got to get up with the play. Encourage your D to skate. This is the fun part of the game. Here comes our D. Look at them coming at the back. They love that stuff. This is just offensive D play, and it's just shooting, and it's just different techniques of guys shooting, some of the best players shooting. And I'll only make a note on a couple of these, but I'll let them play. Wrist shots, slap shots, one-timers, and I'm just going to let this play. The wrister. And you can design your drills based on what these guys are doing. A little quick wrist set than that. Little fakes and wrists. Good player, Larson. Little drag and wrist. Here's the master. So I'll only make a comment on this. The half slap. Not, he's not a big back scratcher there. Same with Hamus. Condensed wind up. Little half slap. Stop and shoot. Stationary shooting. The master, once again, Lidstrom, stationary shots, stop and shoot. This is the one I'll make comment of. D to D, we do a lot of the shooting. Where he catches it, he shoots it. Receiving is just as important for your young D as, as, as the shot. So he's the king of efficiency. Where he stops it, he shoots it. So receiving is important. So it's two motions. Pass, stop. Shot, half slap. We do a lot of this, guys. D direct shots, you should practice with your D. Right off the wall, don't stop it. It's hard, everybody blocks shots these days. Low to high, up, let it go. Practice that with your D. Here's the one timers, you can set these up just like these guys are shooting in practice after. D love to shoot. You can do it all, all day long. Top up one timers, so from low to high one timers. Other low to high one timers. All this shooting can be done in practice with your coaches. Duncan Keith, low to high. I put some fakes in there because they're important. Watch these fakes with some of these guys. Little swivel hips. Great fake. Working all this stuff. Gets guys to bite. He's a deceptive player. And then the master. D sneaking in. Ozone play. We want our D to be active. I'll just show you this here. This is the D sneaking in. We call this the slip slide. That D comes over. I'll just show you that again. Then I'll let the rest of them play. So we get offensive possession of the puck. This D is darting in. Right? Darting in here. In between these guys. That D is coming over. It confuses the forwards. San Jose scores on us. We do it. This is the team that almost created it. So have your D active, looking for holes, jumping in. Encourage your young guys to do this stuff. Here's a slip slide. The one D's in, the other D's out. Boom. Alex Adler, we got this from Detroit. Jumping in. Encourage them to do all that stuff. Okay, this is the last bit. I have to show it. 
No matter what you do, coaches, though, they're still going to mess up. They're still going to mess up. So I put together some low lights for us. This is our D here. Here's Kevin Bieksa. Stance. Whoop. <laughs> Here's Kevin. All casual Kevin today. Whoop. Alex Adler, watch for the sniper. So we asked them to do it any way they can. Here's Lucas Spiza. He's got a little unorthodox style. <laughs> Yannick Weber scored 11 for us last year. Lucas Spiza gave him 3.6 million. Oops. So it happens to the best of them. So, guys, sorry I took so long. I wanted to get through that, and maybe I uh, messed it up a little bit, but I appreciate your patience here. Thank you very much.